Okay guys, how are we doing today? So for you British viewers, since I handle global politics and comment on politics worldwide, it is time to discuss Boris Johnson and Brexit. You're welcome. Prime Minister Johnson promises a bold new Brexit deal. Uh, this one again is from Reuters. Boris Johnson promised his first speech as Prime Minister to lead Britain out of the European Union on October 31st with no ifs or buts, and warned that if the bloc refused to negotiate, then there'd be a no-deal Brexit. Here he goes in, heavy-fisted. Just like Trump would. He really is like the British Trump. The comparisons aren't even funny. It's spooky. Uh, Johnson, who has been hailed by U.S. President Donald Trump as Britain's Trump, is sending the strongest message yet to the EU that he will be taking a distinctively tougher approach to negotiating a revision of the Brexit divorce deal. He took over from Theresa May at one of the most uh, perilous junctures in post-World War II British history. The United Kingdom is divided over Brexit and weakened by the three-year political crisis that has gripped it since the 2016 referendum vote to leave the bloc. We are going to fulfill the repeated promises of a parliament to the people and come out of the EU on October 31st, no ifs or buts. Johnson, 55, said after arriving at the Premier's official residence, no n number 10 Downing Street. We can do a deal without checks at the Irish border. It is of course vital at the same time that we prepare for the remote possibility that Brussels refuses any further to negotiate that we, and we are forced to come out with no deal. Again, I'm trying to trying to sound like Trump if Trump had a British accent because that's literally how close the comparison between the two is in my conception. Now, I, I don't necessarily think in a more aggressive stance is really going to go over well with the officials in Brussels and the EU. It may actually damage the relationship between uh, Britain and the rest of the and the rest of Europe. If you guys are seen as an aggressive body, then they might respond to you in kind. Certainly I don't see the relationship as being 100% positive. There will be some negative outcomes, some negative backlash. Naturally there's negative backlash towards America for Trump's behavior, so a poor uh, so accordingly because his behavior is so very similar in a lot of ways he'll probably have a very similar reaction. Still, if they won't give you a good deal, then a no-deal Brexit is still better than no Brexit at all. I mean, the EU is clearly a tyrannical, you know, despotic body wanting to establish a European superstate. Ignore their words, focus on their actions, and look at how they basically disrespect your national sovereignty, uh, they disrespect your populace, they want open borders, which will uh, leave you open to population displacement. Imagine uh, how, how the settlers first came here to America and displaced the Indians, only worse, and on a larger scale, by Middle Easterners and Africans, which populate like rabbits. Not a racist statement, by the way, just a simple fact. They reproduce way faster which makes the possibility of population displacement all the more likely. Uh, just hours after arriving in Downing Street, the new conservative prime minister uh, began work with one of the biggest culls of senior government jobs in recent British history, changing all of the main ministers most of his appointees were Brexit supporters. Johnson's bet is that the threat of a no-deal Brexit will persuade the EU's biggest powers, Germany and France, to agree to revise the divorce deal that May, that May agreed last November, but failed to push through the British Parliament. The gambit and admission that three years of Brexit talks have failed sets the United Kingdom up for a showdown with the EU and thrusts Johnson towards a potential constitutional crisis or an election at home. While his strategy could get support from Trump, who had advised May to take a much uh, tougher line with Brussels, he has just 99 days to renegotiate and ratify the so-called withdrawal agreement that the EU has repeatedly refused to amend. European Council President Donald Tusk wrote to Johnson saying he was looking forward to discussing cooperation in detail. 
Yeah, the negative backlash will come, and whether or not he'll face a re-election, like a pop, a, a snap election, because his approval rating hits zero, yes, that may happen. It may be the shortest prime, prime ministership in the history of any nation ever. It, dep it all depends on how aggressive he decides to be. I don't think he'll push the envelope too far, but he will push it. And more on my opinion of the EU, I've stated that these people do not represent your people. They represent themselves. These are rich, uh, ivory tower plutocrats who, excuse me, who think that they have your best interest at heart, but they don't. They don't. I mean, just look at what happened in France. Look at what happened in Germany. I mean, uh, Germany experienced at least partial... Uh, has experienced at least a partial population displacement, and the whole Yellow Vest incident in France, where they were just so completely unhappy with uh, the presidency of Emmanuel Macron, and that the benefits have not been positive enough is why they backlashed. They wanted, you know, retirement packages, better wages, etc., etc. Because he's, in many ways, Macron is the typical EU politician. That's the kind of person that the EU likes to elect. These sort of rich sycophants who, uh, who really don't know or understand the working class at all. Anyway. Uh, never mind the backstop. One of Britain's most prominent Brexit campaigners, Johnson, has repeatedly pledged to leave the EU by October 31st, do or die, and to inject a new optimism and energy into the divorce, which he er uh, argues will bring a host of opportunities. In his speech on Wednesday, he rebuked gloomsters and the political class who he said had forgotten the people they should serve, promising instead to serve the British people who he said were his government's true bosses. One of the issues that prevented May getting a divorce deal through Parliament was the Irish backstop, an insurance policy designed to prevent the return of a hard border between the Irish Republic and the British province of Northern Ireland. Johnson said that the issue could be dealt with. Right, because a hard border... A hard border uh, would only increase the uh, the conflict between the Northern Irish and the Southern Irish. The Protestants and the Catholics all destroying each other. A hard border would be a terrible, terrible thing. I mean, I proposed a solution myself, from what I understand the situation, as establishing an independent Irish state that includes both the North and the South. You know, let's force them to talk it out. Like, let's bring them to the table and maybe try and resolve the conflict. Maybe even get the IRA declared a terrorist organization if it hasn't been already. Let's talk about making a united Ireland independent from the United Kingdom. I mean it. Because uh, you guys continue to tax without representation. That's the very reason why, the, why America came into existence. Like, I've seen your British tax rates, tax rates. You guys haven't even begun to learn your lesson. We taught you nothing. There's a reason why Scotland has voted several times to leave. It's pretty obvious that the UK is a raw deal. And yet I would say that the EU is even more of a raw deal. Anyway. Never mind the backstop. The buck stops here. He said, adding that the New Deal could be done that allowed for no border checks. He said the backstop was anti-democratic. At some point, I might uh, develop an actual impression of, uh, of Boris Johnson. I like doing that. It's fun. Uh, he promised to accelerate preparations for a New Deal, though he said Britain did not want such an exit. Listening to what he said today, I got the impression that he wasn't just talking about uh, deleting the Northern Ireland backstop. He's talking about a whole new deal, a better deal for Britain, Irish Prime Minister Leo Varadkar said. Or Varadkar. This is not going to happen. Many investors say a no-deal Brexit would send shockwaves through the world. Economy. Uh, tip Britain's economy into a recession, royal financial markets, and weaken London's position as the preeminent international financial center. To all those who continue to prophesy disaster, I say yes, there will be difficulties. Though I believe that 
with energy and application, they will be far less serious than some have claimed. Johnson said his speech watched by his girlfriend, Carrie Simons, and his staff. Was that the girlfriend that he, that he called uh, Japanese when she was Chinese or vice versa? Yeah, you, you don't do that. You don't do that. They hate each other. Uh, Prime Minister Johnson declared a new leader of the Conservative Party on Tuesday after a vote party members. Johnson began forming his government from Brexit supporters. Sajid Javid, the 49-year-old son of Pakistani Muslim immigrant parents, was named as his finance minister. Uh, Priti Patel was appointed interior minister. Dominic Raab was appointed foreign minister. Stephen Barkley remained as Brexit minister. And Ben Wallace is made defense minister. Liz Truss was appointed trade minister, while Gavin Williamson, former defense minister, uh, returned to government as education minister. Johnson is due to appoint Dominic Cummings, the campaign director of the official Brexit Vote Leave campaign, as a senior advisor in Downing Street. Uh, Disunited Kingdom. F finish this article up. Uh, Johnson, man known for his ambition, messy blonde hair, flowery uh, oratory, and cursory command of detail, must solve a series of riddles if he is to succeed where May failed. The 2016 Brexit referendum showed the United Kingdom divided about much more than the EU and has fueled. Uh, soul-searching about everything from immigration to capitalism, the legacy of empire and modern Britishness. The pound is weak, the economy at risk of recession, allies are in despair at the Brexit crisis, and foes are testing Britain's vulnerability. Johnson's conservatives have no majority in Parliament, so can govern only with the support of ten lockmakers from the Brexit-backing Democratic uh, Unionist Party in Northern Ireland. While Johnson has said he does not want an early election, some lawmakers have promised to block any attempt to leave the EU without a divorce deal. Because in every government, there will always be two sides on every issue. There's no avoiding it. As much as I'd complain about America's two-party system, that's just how it is. Not everyone agrees with everyone. Anyway... <laughs>